this morning because he's worthy to be praised this morning. We thank God for another day. We thank him for bringing us through another week. We thank God for bringing us through another minute, another hour. Great is thy mercy towards me. We thank God for his mercy and his grace this morning. I hope all is well with you. I bid you greetings from HLC, House of Love Christian Ministries, saying it's good to be here. It's good to be here on another beautiful Sunday morning. It's good to praise God, to honor God, to lift up the name of Jesus. I'm calling all things forth this morning. Whatever you need, God's got it, and God's going to give it to you this week. Whatever you need, you need healing. You need a best friend. You need deliverance. You need a financial blessing. You need doors open for you. You need a yes from God for God to say yes on your next move. You need a house. You need a car. Whatever you need this morning, I come to tell you, God's got it. Whatever you need, if you believe it right now, if you join your faith with my faith, I believe God said where one or two are gathered together in my name, he's here. He's right here and God's here ready to give you what you stand in the need of. God's right here ready to give you peace. God's right here ready to ease your mind from what you've been worrying about. God's right here ready to open up your heart. God's right here, whatever you need in this atmosphere, you can receive it. You can thank God for it because God's going to give it to you on this week. Amen. 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 It's all right to say amen. Let the world hear you say amen. If you believe that God's going to give you whatever you need this week, you ought to say amen. There's a few prayer requests I know you have. There are some things I know you want from God. If it's nothing but strength, you want it from God. If it's nothing but a merge of his grace and his mercy and his love, you got it from God. If it's nothing but God hearing you in your midnight hour when you all alone in bed, you got it. God hears you. God is with you. He's with you always. He never leaves nor forsake you. I tell you, that's something to shout about, that God never leaves you nor forsake you. It's something to be glad about because God is a prayer answering God. God knows exactly what you need. He knows exactly where you are. He knows exactly what your prayer request is. God is opening doors right now as we lift the name of Jesus this morning morning. As we magnify God this morning, he's opening doors and making a way for his people. And he's not only making a way from us, but he's blessing everybody that's connected to us this morning. He's blessing everybody that's connected to us this morning. Our children, our grandchildren, great-grandchildren, our friends, our family, our co-workers, our neighbors, our colleagues, they're being blessed because they are connected to us. And that's a reason to give God the glory this morning. We're going back. You know that I started. I started and I'm teaching on dominate generate and terminate. There are some things that God wants you to dominate. There are some areas in our life that we have to take dominion over. There are some things we're supposed to be generating, generating legacy, generating income that are rolled down, generating faith, generating faithfulness, generating deliverance from the evil one, and then terminate. Terminate all that God wants us to get rid of, to get rid of terminating all those relationships that's holding you back from receiving the blessings of God. Terminating all those things that God doesn't want us connected to. Terminating those bad habits that we picked up from, from the world. Dominate. Our series is dominate, generate, and terminate. We know that our main scripture is Deuteronomy 28 and 13. 
And then I'm going to my text for today, Genesis 1 and 26. Our focus text is Deuteronomy 28 and 13. Deuteronomy 28 and 13. It reads, the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You will only move upward and never down. If you hear and carefully follow the commandments of the Lord your God, which I am giving you today. I want you to underline the Lord will make you the head. The head, underline the head. And then you will only move upward. Upward, 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 upward. You will only move upward. When you move downward, you know it's not coming from God. When you go back, it's not coming from God. God say that you will only move up. You will go from glory to glory. You will move upward, upward, upward. Let's go over to Genesis. Genesis 1 and 26 reads, Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female. He created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. I want you to see that God made you this morning in his image and likeness and see that he said rule, rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky over the livestock and all the animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. This morning, my text is, what is it to have dominion? What is it to have dominion? Dominion, dominion, what is it? to have dominion, 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 to rule, to reign, to have authority, to command, to control, to be over a jurisdiction, to have power and to sway. What is it to have absolute ownership? What is it to have dominion? dominion. Let's have a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, this morning we come to you thanking you, Father God, for this word, Father God. Lord God, as I speak, I invite you in to take over, Father God. We invite you in this service this morning to have your way, to speak through me in the name of Jesus to use me as thy servant, Father God, in the name of Jesus. But most of all, God, to touch the hearts and minds to every man and woman that see this message and hear this message, Father God. Let the word of God go forth on the earth. In Jesus' name, let the word of God go forth in the Zoom. In Jesus' name, amen. What is it to have dominion, dominion, dominion? What is it to have dominion? Dominion means stewardship, caretaking, to be over something. 
And if we read the word of God, it means God expects us to be responsible stewards over the glory of what he created. There was an order. There was, there's an order in heaven. There's an order. God is over the angels in heaven. There's order. Someone has to have dominion. And God told us to have dominion down here on earth. In order to dominate, you must take dominion. In order to have dominion, Miss Nora, we must know Jesus. In order for us to walk in dominion and know the power that God gave us and to know the responsibility that God laid upon us, we must know Jesus. People get frustrated and people get angry because they don't know the power that Jesus put inside of them. They don't know how to walk in their power. They don't know who they are in Jesus Christ. So they become frustrated. They become angry. They become jealous of others. But see, when you are comfortable in knowing your position and knowing who you are and who you belong to, you are able to take dominion in what God assigned you over. Dominion, dominion to take authority, to control something. It's like your house, Yvette. If I come to your house, I can't come in Yvette's or Miss Laura house trying to take control because it's your house. You have dominion over what you paid for, what you purchased. You have dominion there. I can't come in trying to change things. I can't take a picture off the wall and tell you, Ms. Noah, take that picture out the living room, put it in the hallway. I can't tell Yvette, take that color out the bathroom and put up red. No, that's yours. You have dominion over that. You rule in your house. So dominion, the words say God says he made us in his own image and likeness so that we may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky. So he made us where we may rule over things that he give us to rule over. He said, be fruitful and increase in number. A lot of people use that be fruitful as in meaning babies. No, it means everything that God put in your hand. Whatever God gave you to do, you supposed to magnify it. It should become bigger. If whatever God gives you, whatever responsibility you have, it's supposed to glorify God. It's supposed to glorify the kingdom of heaven. It should grow. It's like a plant. You start a plant with a seed, but that seed just begin to sprout up. And from that sprouting up, it should start begin growing leaves from that sprout that came out from the seed. So it should begin to flourish. Whatever God give you should begin to flourish. You moved in your home, you may have had a couch, but then now you should have a whole house. You started with a couch, now you have a full living room set, dining room set, bedroom. Anything that you have, it should grow. It should grow. Anything that you're responsible, it should multiply. Be fruitful and multiply. It should increase. Increase happens when you're in your area. Increase happens when you're trying to rule over what God has given you to take care of. Sometimes I, I better be careful with that word because when we use rule, people may, may take it wrong. They may think we mean demanding or giving them or treating them like they're less than. No, we don't treat people like they're less than. We're talking about taking authority over what you have, taking authority over what God has given you and placed inside of you to do, taking authority over those thoughts, taking authority where you can take dominion here on earth in the natural. 
See, you have to be a good steward, a good caretaker. God expects us to be responsible stewards. He expects us to have ownership of things. We're supposed to own something. Dominion is what, what is what is it that you have authority over? What is it that you have authority over? How do you use your power? How do you use your power? What is it that you have authority over? Sometimes, Miss Nor, we look at it that we're supposed to be higher in a job. We think we're supposed to have the title as manager. But every person on a job, you have a function. You make the job flow because you're operating in your position. You are operating and taking dominion on what God has assigned you in that place. It takes many functions in order for a company to run. It wouldn't run properly. If you go to the grocery store and you step in the grocery store, if there's nobody to stock the shelves, the shelves are empty. They wouldn't need cashiers. If there's nobody to unload the truck, then there's no, no, no supplies in the stores. Everybody has a function. You, Everybody has a place where it operates. The manager couldn't manage an empty store. So everybody, I, this morning, I want everyone to know that you are important. No matter what your position is, no matter what title that you have, you are important. You are to take dominion over that place and position that you have. You are to do that job with your best. You are to uphold it because the word says in Deuteronomy that you are going to move upward. It doesn't mean that you're going to stay in that little position stock and shelves. You one day may have increased and moved to the manager position. You would move upward. So our thing is when we go in, we don't get caught on the small things. Remember the scriptures say, be faithful over the small things. Be faithful over a few things and I will make you ruler over many. So be faithful in that little position that you have. And then you will see that it will begin to bring increase in your life because you're doing your job with faithfulness to God, not faithfulness to man, but faithfulness to God. You are stacking that shelf. You are there making sure you're lining them up properly. You are answering questions when a customer asks you. It's right here. There you can get it. Be faithful because God will make you ruler over many. You are to dominate in that position that you have. Because right now you have authority over that position. How do you use your power this morning? How do you use your power? Is it to abuse others or is it for justice, equality, and building the king? How do we use our power? We are to take dominion, but we're still to remain humble. We're still to remain humble unto God. We're still remaining to encourage and to build and to push others. We look, it says that God made us in his image. We have to always remember we were created in the image of God to remain holy, to remain humble before the Lord, to walk in peace with others, to walk and pray and ask God what would his will be. Taking dominion, being over something doesn't mean that we abuse the power and the authority that God has given us and the position that he has placed us in. Having dominion, 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 dominion. 
some of us this morning, we don't have dominion because of our attitudes. We don't have dominion. We can't walk in dominion. We can't rule over nothing because we have a bad attitude, Miss North. We are nasty towards people. People cannot trust us. They cannot have confidence in us. We are always discouraging. We are always blaming others. We are always talking loud. We need others to see us. We think we always on defense with others. We have to defend ourselves all the time. We're not walking in dominion because we didn't get caught up in too much of this earthliness. We didn't separated ourselves from our father, which who created us. We didn't separated ourselves from asking him on what he would have us to do. How are we supposed to operate in our position? How are we supposed to take authority upon the earth? Some of us, event we look to ourselves. We think that we know everything. We think that we can do everything. We think we got a better way, but it's not our way, it's God's way. We are created to please God, it's God's way. Taking dominion doesn't mean abuse. Taking a, a dominion, excuse me, doesn't mean you know everything. Taking dominion means you take what I know and what Miss Nora know, and we come together and we build on that. That's what a team is. Together, everyone accomplishes more. A team builds together. It wouldn't happen without us. So are we abusing our authority? Are we abusing our power? Dominion, what are you dominating here on earth? What are you dominating here on earth? Has the enemy gotten you so down where you're so busy, you're distracted and from walking in your purpose? You are distracted from walking in the plan of God. You are distracted from praying to God. Miss Nora, I, I, I don't know how people live daily and don't talk to God on a daily basis. I don't know. I, it's hard for me to know how people live daily and don't have a thank you to God. You can't see. I thank God for the little things sometimes. I thank God just to be laying sometime in my bed. I thank God sometimes to just drive down the street. Do you know everything, every move we make, every thought we have, it's a blessing from the Lord. Do you know that God is over our lives? So has the enemy gotten us distracted, distracted where we can't see God? Got us distracted where we're separating from God. Got us distracted where we're operating out of our own strength. Got us distracted where we think is the accolades that we receive from people. Paul didn't receive accolades from people. Remember back then they was persecuting Christians. Do the enemy have us distracted where we can't walk in dominion? We can't walk in unity. To walk in dominion is to walk in unity, to walk in love, to walk in peace with others. Has the enemy have you full of worry and doubt that you can't have dominion? You've been wanting to start that business. You've been wanting to buy that house, but he got you worried. He got you in a doubtful place that it won't be a success, that you cannot have home ownership. You cannot be married. No one loves you. 
Does the enemy have you full of worry and doubt where you can't walk in dominion? You can't have dominion over anything that God created. You are unable to dominate. Christians are supposed to have dominion over sin. The Bible says to confess with your mouth and believe that Jesus died for you and he rose from the dead. Do you have dominion this morning over sin? Can you recognize the sin in your life? Can you recognize that you're not supposed to be doing it? Can you recognize that this is not where you're supposed to be, that God has better for you? Can you recognize that I don't know how I got caught up in this, but I'm getting ready to come out of it today. Can you recognize that, hey, God said, cast it down, cast all thoughts down. Can you cast down those evil thoughts that the enemy sends through your mind? Do you have the power to rebuke the enemy? Do you have the power to call those things as though they are? To have dominion is to know that it was God who spoke it and gave you authority to dominate. Do you believe that God gave you the authority to dominate today? So do you have dominion over your life? Do you have dominion over your home? Do you have dominion over what God has placed in your hands, your business? Do you have dominion over your thoughts? Do you have dominion over the sin that Satan tried to bring in your life? God gave us life. God gave us a command to rule over everything over the earth and to rule over sin. Do you have that dominion? We are created to rule over the earth in a way where it reflect the character of God. We are created to rule over the earth where it reflect our heavenly father. When God created Adam and placed him in the garden of Eden, Eden, excuse me, it was to take care of the earth. Adam lost dominion when he sinned. See, when we sin, we lose our dominion. We are created to dominate, to cultivate, and to rule. We are created in God's image. You wasn't created just to take over the world and to rule over people. You were created to take over and to help people to disciple people, to mentor people, to raise them up, to bring them up, to inspire people, to encourage people, to work with excellence. Colossians 3 and 24 say, do your work with excellence. Dominion, to have power, to have the right to govern. You are created to dominate, to generate and terminate. I come to you asking you this morning, do you have dominion over your house this morning? Do you have dominion over your flesh this morning? Do you have dominion over the things that God has placed in your hands this morning? Do you have dominion over your thoughts this morning? Do you have dominion over what God has entrusted in your hands this morning? You were created to dominate this morning. I'm telling you this morning, you were created so God can move you up. For it. If you at a standstill, you need to get with God. You were created to connect with God so you can rule over things on the earth. You wasn't created to sit back and nag and to be unhappy and to cry. You wasn't created in the image of God because God is not sitting in heaven crying about what's happening about here on earth. God is sitting in heaven creating things for us, opening doors for us. God is sitting in heaven appointing people, appointing you places you are supposed to be, creating people. God is sitting in heaven being about 
his business, looking for us to connect with him, looking for us to take dominion here on earth, looking for us to stand up for him, looking for us to speak for him, looking for us to pray to him, looking for us to pray for others, looking for us to help others to raise themselves up. You were created to dominate, generate, and terminate the sin in your life and terminate all relationships that hold you back. You were created to take dominion. You were created to take dominion, to rule. You were created to walk around with your head up high. You were created to walk around like you know who you belong to. You are created to have power and you are created to have authority because Jesus died to give you that power and to give you that authority. You are created to cultivate relationships that are meaningful. You are created to have faith and to see things come forth here on the earth. You are created to dominate, generate, and terminate. Terminate anything that's not like God. Terminate anything that doesn't sound like God. You can't sit around those who are always complaining. You can't sit around the haters. Let your haters see God move you up. Let your haters see you blessed by God. Let your haters motivate you to do more. Let your haters, you were created to love yourself. You are created in God's image. You don't have to walk around with your head down. Look at what God has placed in your life. Look at what God has given you to take rule and authority over. Look at what God has planned for your life. Look at what God has for your future. Look what God has for your today. Look at the promises of God. You were created to dominate, generate, and terminate. 